Welcome back. Now, there's news just coming into us that there are reports of a terror attack or what's perceived as an ambush on oil exploration workers and security operatives between Megumiri and Gubio local government area of Borono State. Sources say 10 academic and technical staff from the geology department of the University of Meduguri were among those said to have been abducted. Reports also say security operatives and some members of the civilian JTF, numbering up to 30, also fell at the hands of the terrorists. Well, from there, let's take a look at some sports for the day. Here's Barong, Tony Aranta. Thank you, Joma, and welcome to Sports News. Africa's most prestigious badminton tournament, the Lagos International Classics, will serve off tomorrow at the Mladi Okoya Thomas Indoor Sports Hall of the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos. The Badminton Federation of Nigeria, BFN, said players from 10 countries, including Nigeria, will jostle for honors at the competition. The Lagos state government has increased the prize money for the competition from $15,000 to $20,000. The winners in the men's and women's singles categories will have $2,200 each. Sprinter Blessing Akagbare and sprint hurdler Toby Bolola Omushon will lead Nigeria's team of 12 athletes to the 2017 IAAF World Championships in London from August the 4th to August the 13th. Akagbare will be making her fourth competitive appearance at the event while Omushon will be making her debut. Others listed are reigning Commonwealth long jump queen Eshe Brume, Glory and Nathaniel, Emerald Egwin, Abike Egbeni, as well as quarter mile trio of patients Okoro George, Yinka Ajayi, and Margaret Bangbusi. For the men, Samson Nathaniel, Chukwe Buka, and Niwachi, and Edozie Ibadi will also be making their first appearance at the championships. The league management company, the LMC, has recommended for the withdrawal of six match officials from the Nigeria Professional Football League for poor performance. The referees are Umar Saleh, Mohamed Aliyu, Abdullah Abdullahi, Samuel Agba, Manuel Udo, John Boa, Falaga. According to the LMC, the officials were unprofessional in their handling of games involving Niger Tornadoes and Plateau United. Katsina United versus Kano Pillars, Plateau United versus FC Ubayuba, and Ufanyoba versus Gombe United. And now to the prize ring, where boxing promoter Eddie Hearn says November the 11th in Las Vegas is the date the location penciled in for the rematch between Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. Hearn revealed last month that Las Vegas was the preferred option, despite interest in Dubai, Nigeria, and Cardiff. Both Hearn and Joshua have been spending time in the Nevada city as they look to finalize the rematch. Joshua knocked out Klitschko in the 11th round of a thrilling contest at Wembley Stadium in April to emerge the WBA, IBF and IBO heavyweight champion. And that's it on Sports News for tonight. I'm Barong, Tony Ranta and Ijama. We'll be back with a wrap. Thanks a lot, Barong. Leaders of Libya's opposing governments have agreed to a ceasefire after a meeting in Paris today mediated by the French President Emmanuel Macron. The UN-backed Prime Minister and the rival commander Khalifa Haftar both said in a joint 10-point statement that they commit to a ceasefire and to refrain from any use of armed force or any, for any purpose that does not strictly constitute counter-terrorism. They also promised to work towards holding elections as early as 2018. Both leaders had tried to reach common ground earlier this year but failed to arrive at an agreement. And the Israeli government has removed metal detectors placed at the entrance of the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem's holy site following protests by the Palestinians. Palestinians today held prayers just outside the mosque in defiance of the metal detectors before they were removed. Metal detectors being removed from the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem in an apparent U-turn by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as he plans with smart, less obstructive surveillance means. The security cabinet voted to remove the metal detector gates after a meeting lasting several hours convened for a second time on Monday after it had broken off discussions a day earlier. Many Palestinians had been refusing to visit the complex as long as the metal detectors were there, holding prayers in the streets outside the old city instead. The detectors were installed at entry points to Al-Aqsa Mosque compound as security measures after two police officers were fatally shot on July the 14th. 
A United Nations Middle East envoy warned on Monday of a possible escalation of the violence if not well handled and in good time. It is extremely important that a solution to the current crisis be found by Friday this week. I think the dangers on the ground will escalate um, if we go through another cycle of Friday prayer without a resolution to this, uh, to this uh, current crisis. There are speculations that Israel agreed to remove the metal detectors on diplomatic grounds. The site, politically sensitive, has been subject to a delicate set of arrangements referred to as the status quo. Well, just to bring you up to speed with our breaking story there that there's been a terror attack or what's perceived to be an ambush on oil exploration workers and security operatives between Magumeri and Gubio local government areas of Borno State. Sources say 10 academic and technical staff from the geology department of the University of Meduguri were also among those said to have been abducted. And the main news again. The presidency today confirmed that seven governors drawn from the six geopolitical zones were tonight to visit President Mohamedou Buhari in London, just as the governor of Imo State, Rocha Sokoracha, refuted claims that the president is on life support. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Hunyato. Good night.